I'm Scott Timmels with the Investing News Network. I'm here today at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. Joining me now is Giant Bandari, financial analyst with Anarcho Capital. Thanks for joining me, Giant. Thanks for having me, Scott. So it's quite early in 2019. Given that 2018 wasn't the best year for commodities, how do you feel 2019 is going to track? Well, uh, really, uh, Scott, last year, a lot of people were very euphoric about cobalt and lithium and uh, uranium. Uh, And this is always a problem because when people become too euphoric about a commodity, it tends to increase in price above its natural level. People warehoused uh, cobalt, for example, and people started warehousing uranium. Uh, And they have lost a huge amount of money by doing so. Uh, The problem is that uh, unless you are actually a manufacturer or user of these commodities, you should not try to speculate in these commodities. And particularly when you get into physical space, the spread is so large. And the fact that it's you have to pay for warehousing costs and insurance costs. People lose a lot of money. So I truly discourage people from trying to speculate in commodities. And last year was a year for speculation for a lot of people. A lot of people obviously lost a lot of money. And how do you think they will do in 2019 if they continue to speculate? I I don't think people should try to speculate in commodities. Mm -hmm. Investing in mining mining is about trying to understand the value inherent in a project. Mm -hmm. It is not about speculating in commodities. It's not about playing the stock market game. Mm -hmm. Uh, But people consistently do that and they consistently lose money. Mm -hmm. If you look at the venture exchange uh, chart, uh, Scott, Mm -hmm. over the last 12 years, it has lost value every single year except for two years between 2009 and 2010. However, in a bear market, you can actually make good money if you focus on value because it allows you to accumulate value at a cheap price. So a bear market is good for you. Just focus on looking for value rather than speculating. Fantastic. And so obviously there's going to be a lot of investors here today that are going to be very interested in what you've got to say. You're presenting tomorrow. What are you going to be talking about? Uh, I am talking about pretty much the same thing, okay. why people should not look, uh, speculate in commodities yeah. and why people should not try to lever- look for leverage in commodities mm-hmm. using mining companies as vehicles. Mm-hmm. And there is this incestuous relationship in the mining space about commodity speculation mm-hmm. and looking for leverage, mm-hmm. which means that people People usually end up investing in projects that are uneconomic, Mm -hmm. and if they invest in sub-economic deposits, they actually unnecessarily create supply of commodities Mm -hmm. while harming themselves and while harming other legitimate investors. Okay. And so the last time we spoke on camera, we talked about China a lot. In the last few weeks, there's been a few stories about fears of an economic slowdown. What are your thoughts on that, and has your opinion changed since the last time we spoke? Well, Scott, I was, as I was telling earlier, mm-hmm. I was in China day before mm-hmm. yesterday. Mm-hmm. I flew in from, from China. Mm-hmm. Uh, China continues to excite me. Mm-hmm. There, I, there are real cultural changes taking place in China. Mm-hmm. I like how that society is changing its behavior. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was at a conference there, and people were talking against their government. They were talking about the legitimate problems that the government is creating in the economic space. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a voice there among people when government does not do the right things. So I'm very happy with the changes happening in China. Now, China has benefited hugely from uh, taking away intellectual property of Western companies, uh, not trading fairly in the international market, etc., etc. Uh, But having said that, it's a very open-minded country. It's open for business. I think the fear of trade that has come up because of U.S. and China trade war Mm -hmm. will blow over Mm -hmm. and uh, everything will be on the right path. I actually also like what Trump is doing. I like what China is doing. Uh, They are doing the right things. They should be on the negotiating table. And from what I know, they are on a negotiating table. They will sort it out. What sort of timeline are you thinking for when they'll sort it out? I think it will be sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Uh, There is... uh, China has to ensure that it continues to grow. China is not a fanatic country. China needs to focus on the fundamentals, which is economic growth of its people, 
keep and to keep social stability and that cannot happen unless they are in good terms with the US they also understand that unlike earlier regimes Trump is not going to kowtow in front of anyone Trump is one of those leaders who has a spine so he's fighting for what is right for Americans and other countries are starting to understand that this will continue uh, and this has brought North Korea to the table this has brought China to the table this will brought bring a lot of other people to the table negotiating table okay so you think it's a, there's a win-win situation for the US and China absolutely absolutely and they are good partners I think China China is uh, Chinese continue to come to North America to study, live and work and they have made a huge contribution to the western economy. They go back and now there are more unicorns in China than they are in the US. They are China and the US are good long-term partners in my view. Hope provided they bridge over this uh, conflict of South China Sea for example or the Taiwan issue or some of the issues but I think they will be on the negotiating table and they will sort it out. Fantastic. And so moving on you've spoken about uranium recently well you've written about it and you've said before that you believe that uranium bulls may be deluding themselves can you just run me through why you think that? Oh absolutely uranium is a very interesting case is Scott. Mm-hmm. Uh, most uranium mining projects do not make sense unless uranium price goes up by a hundred or two hundred percent now for these companies to break even if uranium price has to go up that much I'm much much better off investing in uranium physical mm-hmm. because by the time I will have made 200 percent of my profit these companies will still only be breaking even but then the problem is much worse than that because I still don't want to speculate in commodity called uranium mm-hmm. and the reason is that long-term pricing of uranium has stayed stagnant for the last one and a half years a spot price fell and a spot price has gone up by 30 percent from its bottom of 20 dollars uranium production uranium based electricity production has continued to decline in the last 30 years contrary to what people think about uranium uranium projects are we have fewer uranium projects than we had 10 years back and we have fewer uranium projects than we had 30 years back uranium electricity uh, generating projects and now here is another problem electricity based on sun energy and wind energy has declined drastically in terms of cost Mm -hmm. by as much as 50 to 90 percent in the last 10 years which means that among the lowest costs of energy is solar energy and wind energy in many many cases now uranium and coal based electricity generating plants are among the most expensive electricity generating plants today uh, which really makes hence no sense to me to invest in uranium new uranium projects have to pass a huge hurdle rate for mining projects and also a huge hurdle rate in terms of generating electricity because they are uneconomic mm-hmm. relative to sun and wind energy. Okay, and so one of the arguments that's often made about uranium, especially these days, is its green credentials. Can you just talk to me about talk to me about that? Well, firstly, that's a camouflage for a lot of investors mm-hmm. uh, for their greed. Mm-hmm. They are greedy about making money, but they want to show their intentions as uh, pro being Mm -hmm. pro-green. The reality is solar and wind energy is even more green Mm -hmm. than uranium-based energy is. Mm -hmm. So there is, I see no reason why you should be specifically going for uranium energy Mm -hmm. just because it is so-called green. It is indeed greener than coal-based energy, Mm -hmm. uh, but wind and particularly sun-based energy is much more greener. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so if an investor is thinking about green investments, where would they be putting their money in in commodities? Uh, I, I think it's a very... you create too many conflicts in your mind when you think too much about uh, uh, trying to have too many intentions behind your investments. Mm-hmm. You can either try to make money or try to think green. Mm-hmm. Um, capitalism and e- economics takes care of making sure that the best technology that is best for the society <coughs> comes into uh, comes into play at the least possible cost mm-hmm. and least possible cost is the most green way of developing an economy 
Fantastic. Radio, we'll, we will wrap it up there. Once again, I'm Scott Tibbles with the Investing News Network, and joining me today is Giant. Thank you for joining me, Giant. Thanks very much for the opportunity, Scott.